The intent of this video is to address the theory that the ball turret gunners were the most dangerous and vulnerable position on a World War II bomber. We will rank each of the bomber crew station's risk with regard to combat injury and death. There will be a clear lowest and highest risk bomber crew station location. The genesis of this study is based on the countless World War II YouTube content providers putting out videos stating this premise. Videos with text in their titles like, Dangerous job in history, most likely to die, worst job in the USAAF, a death sentence in the B-17. These videos have millions of views. The Army Air Corps Museum website also joins in with questionable ball turret information, as shown on this page. The turret was the most dangerous position on the airplane. It had no flak protection, easy target to fighters, and difficult to bail out from. This image shows the location of each of the 10 B-17 crew members. Starting at the nose, the B-17 is manned by the bombardier, navigator, pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, who also doubles as a top turret gunner, radio operator, ball turret gunner, right-left waist gunners, and tail gunner. We will address and rank the crew members' risk from combat wounds and death, anoxia, no death, anoxia with death, frostbite injury, combat fatigue, and bailout risk, adopting this table for tracking, where a ranking of 1 indicates the crew position is most susceptible to the risk parameter, and a ranking of 10 indicates the position is least susceptible to the risk parameter. The ball turret gunner is located in the Sperry ball turret curled up in the fetal position, as shown in this image. This image shows the turret zones of armor protection from a 1944 B-17 pilot's manual. The back hatch is fabricated from a 0.26 inch thick cast aluminum plate. The bottom seat is a 0.26 inch thick armored steel plate, and the vertical seat is a 0.60 inch thick armored steel plate. The aluminum cover plate is considered part of the armor protection system. His his legs are inside the two Browning machine guns. The machine gun's casing provides some degree of leg shielding protection. The ammo containers and belted ammo above his lower extremities and stomach also provide some degree of shielding from flak and projectiles. The ball turret gunner is well shielded by armor, belted ammo, guns, and equipment. Here's a couple images of the protection just discussed. Let's first address what type of projectile causes the most bomber crew member casualties. This table from a 1962 United States Army Surgeon General report titled Wound Ballistics outlines a distribution of 1,117 bomber crew member casualties during World War II. The columns represent the type of projectile, the casualty as wounded in action or killed in action, total casualties, and percent of total casualties. The study results include 86.2% of crew casualties are from ground artillery flak, 3.9% from aircraft 20mm projectiles, 0.6% from aircraft bullets, and 7.8% from secondary missiles, where secondary missiles include plexiglass transparency fragments, aluminum airframe fragments, bullet-resistant glass fragments, brass fittings, electrical or radio parts, and the plane's own ammunition cartridges. Most of the crew casualties are from ground artillery flak and very few from German bomber interceptor machine gun bullets. Clearly though, low velocity flak and somewhat 20 millimeter projectiles should be more of a crew concern than enemy aircraft high velocity bullets. This table from a 1955 USAF Office of the Surgeon General document titled Medical Support of Army Air Forces in World War II addresses the results of a study on the distribution of bomber crew member wounds. The aim of the analysis was to determine which bomber crew positions were more susceptible to wounds with the goal to consider adding armor to those locations which were more vulnerable to enemy projectiles. The data showed little variation in susceptibility based on crew position. However, the ball turret gunner and co-pilot were least susceptible to wounds than the other crew members. The data used in the study was collected from November 1, 1942 through December 31, 1943. The columns represent the bomber crew position, number of wounds per crew position, and percent of total. The crew positions are ranked from most susceptible to least susceptible by wound sustained, where the navigator and tail gunner represent 12%, and the ball turret gunner and co-pilot are half this value at 6%. Given this data, the ball turret gunners and co-pilots were the safest crew positions from enemy-caused wounds. Based on this database, we can populate the first row of the bomber crew member risk table and highlight the ball turret's position. 
This table shows a distribution of 1,117 bomber crew members that were either wounded in action or killed in action. Seven ball turret gunners were killed in action out of the 110 total. Only the co-pilot's position sustained less killed in action at six. This chart tries to rationalize the results of the table. The high killed in action levels of the waste gunner position may be due to two positions lumped into a single value. Later in the war, the 8th U.S. Army Air Forces eliminated one of the waste gunner positions. A single gunner was responsible for manning both stations. The effect of this crew position change on the data is not known. High casualty rates for bombardiers and navigators is due to their position within the nose of the bomber. The nose section is less protected by shielding from equipment and personnel. They are also exposed to a greater intensity of ground artillery flak. Aircraft flak damage was more prevalent in the leading edges of the wing and less so in the trailing edges of the wing. Lastly, the lowest incidence of casualties occurs for crew members in the ball turret. The killed in action data can be populated in the ranking table. This chart shows what part of your body is likely to be struck by flak. The ball turret gunner is most likely to be struck by flak in his legs, arms, head, and chest in that order. None of the flak struck his stomach area. This is likely due to the ball turret gunner in a less exposed fetal position and well protected by the ammo boxes and belt above his area. Crew members were also susceptible to anoxia, lack of oxygen. This table from a 1944 Headquarters Army Air Forces document titled Aviation Physiologist Bulletin lists the bomber crew's position susceptibility to non-fatal anoxia. The susceptibility of anoxia is greater in isolated crew positions. The data was collected from B-17s and B-24s during the time frame of August 1942 through August 1944. Co-pilots had the lowest incidence and ball turret gunners had the highest incidence of non-fatal anoxia. Co-pilots and pilots had the lowest incidence and tail gunners had the highest incidence of fatal anoxia. We can populate the two anoxia risk rows in the ranking table. Another cause of crew endangerment was injury due to frostbite. As listed on this table, the columns are the bomber crew member's position, percentage of cold injury based on period, and body part susceptibility to injury. For the period of May 1944 through April 1945, co-pilots were least susceptible and tail gunners were most susceptible to frostbite. If injured, a ball turret gunner's face, hands, feet, and buttocks were more susceptible to frostbite in that order. We can update the crew risk table with this data. This page addresses the susceptibility of battle fatigue based on bomber crew position. Surely you would expect the ball turret gunners, given their confined, isolated crew position, would have most stress in dealing with combat. Nope. The most stressful position was a radio operator. This position was isolated from the other crew members and in it did not have much outside visibility. Being able to see the action was just as important as participating. Bombardiers, navigators, and pilots suffered less anxiety in that order as their positions gave them the best outside visibility. The radio room had two small windows and a small removable upper hatch. We can populate the battle fatigue row in the table rankings. What about the extra risk for ball turret gunners during a bailout? A channel educated guess is that a ball turret gunner could egress a turret and be at his bailout station in around 60 seconds. Depressing the turret to expose the hatch inside the fuselage only takes three seconds. He then reaches back and opens the hatch handles and gets out of the turret, attaches his parachute, and gets to his bailout station. This table from a 1945 Army Air Forces board document titled Parachute Questionnaire Project contains a survey addressing various parachute questions. Of the 838 B-17 crew members who jumped, 13.3% had under one minute to prepare. This implies 86.7% of the ball turret gunners would have enough time to bail out. We can finish the ranking table with the caveat that the data used to construct the table may be based on returning bombers, so there may be some survivor bias in the results. Let's summarize the risk susceptibility of the bomber crew positions. Which bomber crew member is the safest? Least likely to experience wounds or death? Clearly the co-pilot. Which bomber crew member is least safe? The one most likely to experience injury or death? Clearly the tail gunner. The tail gunner has the highest ranking for being killed in action, anoxia death, and frostbite injuries. He also has the second highest ranking for wounds and anoxia, no death.
The ball turret station is less exposed and well protected by armor, armaments, ammo belts, and equipment. The station is one of the best protected from enemy attacks. He can be considered the second safest position from being either wounded in action or killed in action. Only the co-pilot occupies a safer crew position. Do you agree with the evaluation results? Did any of the data shown surprise you? If you found this bomber gun station evaluation worthy of your time, please consider commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.